Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and phase one of my ultimate Pelican dropship mock. In a few moments, we'll take a closer look at the phase one part of this mock, the Troop Bay. But before that, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the project itself and what I'm trying to achieve. Over the years, Mega Constructs have, or Mega Blocks have released three Halo Pelicans. They've done two Pelican dropships, the original Bungie era D77 and the later 343 Industries era G79 gunship. Now, you'll be able to tell from the pictures you can see at the moment that I'm using the forest green camo style blocks for this build as opposed to the original green that they used for the dropship from the bungee era. The main reason I'm using this is that the parts are better because it's a later variant of block. So Mega Blocks had improved their quality by the time that they started releasing these sets. It's also because this green they used for the Rhino and various other sets. And because I'm going to need an absolute torrent of pieces for this build, I needed a a colour that I had an abundance of and it just so happens that this is the colour I've got the most pieces of. There's also a lot of pieces in this colour that aren't available in the older, more olive green colour of the original dropship they produced. For those that have been following my channel, you'll be aware that although I've been collecting these Halo Mega Blocks for almost 10 years, I haven't had a chance to actually build any of it until earlier on this year in 2019. So I'm by no means an experienced builder. And in regards to free building, I've got very limited experience. So the first thing that I had a little dabble with was I created this Forerunner power structure out of an old Lego Star Destroyer set I had kicking around. Uh, the next thing I decided to do was this Arctic field base mock, which was, it's very basic, but I really enjoyed doing this. My first experience of creating something not from instructions. And then from that, I moved on to my ultimate assault on high ground mock, which I really like. This is definitely a favorite of mine. I really like working on this. And speaking of working on it, I have done more work to this mock and hopefully I'll be able to release an update video, phase two, over the next couple of weeks for you. So you can see what I've been doing with that too. Moving back onto the Pelican, my inspiration for doing this was the trailer, the E3 trailer 2019 for Halo Infinite. Now that trailer is set inside of a almost stranded Pelican and it really, really had an effect on me. I, I loved this trailer and I was really impressed with how I was surprised at how big the inside of this Pelican was. I didn't even realize there was three rooms on the Pelican, as in you've got the troop bay, you've got the cockpit, and there's some sort of room in between, which I'm struggling to find out what that room actually is. But either way, it just inspired me to start thinking about the Pelicans and what Mega have produced so far. And although I love both Pelican sets that they've released, in fact, I've only got two of them, so I don't know about the police one. I'd love to have it, but I don't have it. Although I really like those, it got me wondering whether you could create a minifig scale pelican and have a full size troop bay, a full size cockpit. So I started looking up the dimensions which I found on the internet and did a few calculations with the size of one of the minifigs and I thought, you know, I think I can do this. So I started having a little play around with the troop bay and dimensions and figuring out roughly how big it would be. One thing I have struggled with is getting pictures of everything that you need to do it. So that's been a bit of a challenge. I've just been watching the cutscenes from Halo 2 that Blur redid because they're very, very accurate and any pictures I can find. So this is by no means going to be an exact replica, but it is going to be based on the original D77 TC pelican so the halo one pelican where the pilot and the co-pilot sit alongside each other rather than the later version that comes in halo 3 where the pilot sits in front of the co-pilot on the left hand side of the cockpit or the even later variant of the gunship so although i'm using the gunship colors i'm going for your classic halo pelican styling here once I decided which variant and size of Pelican I wanted to build, I then had to decide what I wanted from this mock. And for me, it was really important that I had a detailed interior. As time and time again, you see manufacturers producing both Lego and Mega Bloks, some amazingly detailed sets that look absolutely incredible with either no interior or a Technic structural interior that just kind of loses the illusion of what you're looking at. So for me, and a detailed interior is an absolute must. And secondly, I needed to be able to access 
this interior because I wanted to be able to use this for stop motion filming and all sorts. And also I've got two young children that love playing with these things. And for them, interaction is absolute key. So it was really important for me to be able to build this so that once it's all built, you can still easily access the areas you want to access. Now this leads me on to the first feature that I've built in to this Troop Bay area. As you can see, there's two humongous great big square holes in the side of the hull. The reason these holes are there is so you can easily remove the seating area. And the reason I wanted to do this is because it just makes life easier for when you're posing figures on and off there. The other reason I wanted to do it is as the games have been released, they've sort of changed the style of seating. You'll see the style of seating in the Halo 6 Infinite trailer is different to the style of seating, say, they use in the cutscenes from Halo 4 Spartan Ops campaign trailers. So they do change things around a lot, and this just gives me flexibility. If I want to, I can change the seating, I can change the color. It just gives me adaptability, basically. I decided the best way to deal with this was to have the seating as a separate section that can be removed. Um, this has got double benefits. One, the, the seating comes out in one easy way like this. As you can see, the back side of it just hinges down and you can slide the whole unit out. And then obviously you can just slide it back in once you've changed your figures or changed the seats or whatever it is you wanted to do with it. Whilst it's out, as you've seen, as this troop bay has been rotating, you can see it leaves you this gaping great big hole to film through. So if you're doing stop motion and you want to do something, you just remove one side of the pelican and you've got that huge window to film through, which is going to work really, really great. I'm really looking forward to using that. Moving on to the rear of the troop bay, we've got the main access hatch and the ramp. Now this was incredibly difficult. I rebuilt this three times because I just couldn't get it right. In the end, I'm quite pleased with the angles and the overall look that I've managed to achieve. It, it definitely involved some creative thinking, that's for sure. Now, there is compromise here. The rear access hatch, the actual ramp is supposed to be split into two. The top third is supposed to slide up into the tail section of the fuselage, whilst the lower two thirds folds down as I've got it here. That was just going to be too difficult so I decided to just go for the overall shape and look and just have the whole thing fold down. That said, as you can see I have made it so it's completely detachable so if I do want to modify this rear tail ramp at any point it shouldn't be too difficult to do that in the future. Another feature I've been working on is the landing gear. As you can see, I've made a part section of one side just to get an idea. I needed to put the pivot points into the back of the fuselage while I was building it. So I built a leg just to give me an idea of the angles. So as you can see in the up position, it takes kind of the line of the, the rear section of the fuselage. And when you lower it down, it's able to flex out as well as the landing gear does on the actual Pelican. I'm relatively pleased with this, but I won't be able to finish this landing gear until I've got the tail section of the Pelican installed, and that's probably not going to be for a while. When I do get around to finishing that leg and the other leg, I plan to use probably mongoose wheels to put on the very tips of those legs as the landing gear. Moving on to the front of the Pelican Troop Bay, you may have noticed there are a set of doors there with a figure attempting to punch something into the data pad on the wall there to get through those doors. Now, the doors were a big thing for me. It was I really needed to, them to function. I've never made sliding doors before with bricks, Lego, Mega Blocks or anything. So this was all new for me. I've had to learn. So as I say, I'm pretty pleased with the result. And when you spin the Troop Bay around, it gives a nice view of being able to see through those doors. Obviously nothing to see at the moment because the rest of the ship isn't finished, but once there's more to see, I think that's really going to be beneficial to the overall feel of the ship. Coming around to the front of the ship, you can see this is that middle room that I said I was unsure of as to what it is. Um, it's pretty much empty in the Infinity trailer, but I plan on using it as an armory, so I'm going to absolutely fill that with weapons racks and as many painted weapons as I've got. Coming back to the main troop bay, the only other thing really to show you is the, the slight greebling work I've started doing on the inside of the troop bay. I've tried to use as many pieces as I can just to make it look a bit more interesting with piping and various other little components that I don't really know what any of them are. I just put them on there because I thought they looked nice. Now, 
The only other thing that I've got is that you can see two silver chimney looking things coming up above the door. Those are for ventilation ductings, which once I do the top section of the pelican, which will be the roof, which will also be removable, the rest of that ducting will come down along the roof section of the troop bay. So that's something I'm looking forward to completing as well. And that's just about it for phase one. So if you have any questions on that, by all means ask away in the comments section. I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss phase two, which should be the cockpit and the armory. So as soon as I've got all that put together, I'll do another video and I'll show you how it's all gone. So once again, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.